Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today we are back with another beautiful, fantastic example chart where we shall discuss the most wealth giving nakshatras. Okay. So many times people think that uh, there are certain nakshatras which just make you wealthy, which means they think uh, uh, there are certain nakshatras which you have planets in. So uh, in YouTube, there are many uh, nakshatras floating around. So I get so many mails where uh, people list these nakshatras, okay? So let me name them. So number one is Rohini. So people think if they have planets in Rohini, then they will be wealthy. Well, no, it doesn't work like that, okay? Then people think if they have planets in Pushya, they will be wealthy. They will be millionaires, billionaires, okay? It doesn't work like that. Then some people think it's Magha. Some people think Jeshta. Some people think uh, Mrikshira, okay? So uh, the thing is, they may give wealth more than the other nakshatras, but if they are falling in your dustanas, okay. So, so for example, if you are a Gemini lagna and if you have planets in Rohini, in the bhava chart, that's terrible because uh, if in the bhava chart Rohini is in your twelfth house, then you will lose wealth, okay? And it will happen through some scandal because Rohini is known for scandals, all right? So therefore, do not stereotype uh, the sthira nakshatra. So similarly, people think Uttar Falguni always gives you wealth. Well, it will give you if it is linked to certain houses, okay? And that's exactly what we will discuss. Because if Uttar Falguni is in 6, 8, 12, in the Bhava chart, in these houses, Dustanas, or including the third house also, then it could happen that you are signing too many contracts, which happens in Uttar Falguni, and you are losing a lot of wealth. You are signing blunders, actually. All right. So, do not stereotype certain nakshatras. Okay. Even if you have a nakshatra like Ardhra or Mula, which is very much dreaded, I get uh, mails where people tell me, Oh, sir, I have my ascendant in Ardhra. Nobody will marry me. I have ascendant in Mula. Nobody will marry me. What will happen? You know. All right, so if these nakshatras are indicated the way I will tell you here, then you will get money, okay, irrespective of whichever nakshatra it is, however dreaded or however tikshna is this, you know, tikshna nakshatras, however it is, you will get wealth, okay, if that is what you want always. All right, so the principle is I will share my screen. Uh, there you go. Okay, so this is an example chart of a person born in New Delhi, India. And this person is uh, very rich. <clears throat> uh, in Indian language, you can say he's a karorpati, which means he's like a millionaire or maybe billionaire. <laughs> All right, so the principle that I would like to illustrate today is the nakshatras, which are ruling your second, sixth, tenth, and eleventh houses. They are the most wealth-giving nakshatras, okay? But nakshatras cannot give you anything. Things will come from planets, all right? Because you get wealth in the dasha of planets. So that means the planets which are sitting in the nakshatras of the Second Lord, Sixth Lord, Tenth Lord, or the Eleventh Lord will end up giving you money. All right, this is advanced astrology concept. This is a bit difficult to understand. I'll try to explain here. Okay, so if you are new to astrology, it might be difficult for you to understand. So you should watch my astrology basics playlist. Okay, and yes, as usual, uh, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your uh, wealth giving nakshatras, you can always go to my website to book a consultation. You will find the link down in the description section. And yes, beautiful chart. Guru is in exaltation in Lagna. So God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Oops, Guru is in Multricon. <laughs> now, what did I say? I said, uh, so the nakshatras which are there, you see, 11th Lord is Venus, okay? So then 10th Lord is Mars, okay? Then 6th Lord is Jupiter himself, then 2nd Lord is Sun himself, okay? So now, 
Among these, uh, I will tell you the gradation. The second house is least important. Sixth house is a bit more powerful. Tenth house is very, very powerful. And eleventh house is the pinnacle of anything. Okay. The eleventh house, they say, is ten, uh, three times more stronger than the tenth house. Okay. And they say the tenth house is three times more stronger than the sixth house. And the sixth house is three times more stronger than the uh, second house. Okay. Because these three other houses of uh, Arthas, 2nd, 6th and 10th and 11th house is the gain, alright? And gain in Kali Yuga, generally these days it means money, monetary gains. So now, you have to check uh, what is going on here. So, which nakshatra, so now here, who is the 11th lord? It's Venus, okay? So, Venus ruled nakshatras are the most wealth giving nakshatras in this horoscope, okay? Which are the nakshatras that Venus rules? Which nakshatras are ruled by Venus? Think. Don't see where Venus is. See which nakshatras Venus rules. Okay. Venus rules number one. Bharani nakshatra. Okay. Bharani nakshatra. Is there any planet in Bharani? No. Rahu is in Ashwini. Rahu. Because Bharani is completely in Aries. And... Rahu is in Ashwini, okay? So therefore, Rahu doesn't seem to give that massive wealth, but it still gives because it is himself placed, it is in the 10th house, all right? So planetary-wise, it is potent enough to give you some promotion or some raise, appraisal or something like this, okay? Not something very big. But yes, because it is in the 10th house, it will give you. But if this was in Bharani, this would be like, you know, uh, 10 times more. You know? So, now Rahu can uh, at max give you a promotion in the Dashas. Okay, we will go to Dashas later on. Now, you see, which are the nakshatras will by Venus? We have Bharani nakshatra, okay, which is following the 10th house. Then we have which nakshatras? We have Purvashada. Purvashada is ruled by Venus. Is there any planet in Purvashada? Unfortunately, not. Then, which is the other nakshatra which is ruled by Venus? Purva Falguni. Purva Falguni is lauded by Venus. Do not forget. Alright? So, therefore, Purva Falguni, Bharani and Purvashada, these three are the most powerful nakshatras okay, for wealth. So any planet sitting in either of these three will give massive wealth during the during their Anta or Mahadashas. Okay. So <clears throat> now you see what's going on here. You check these two houses. So Aries is empty, so nothing. Uh, uh, sorry, I mean uh, Bharani is empty, no planet in Bharani, Purva Shada is empty. Now go to Leo. Purva Falguni is completely falling in Leo. Okay. Now you check what is going on. There you see the sun is placed in Purva Falguni. Then moon is placed in Purva Falguni. Do not forget this. Okay. So there you see the Lagna Lord is placed in the Nakshatra of the 11th Lord. This is huge. This is massive. This is like, this will blow it up. Okay. Then who is sun here? Why, why did I say Lagna Lord? Because moon is the ascendant Lord. This is a cancer ascendance chart. Okay. Then you see who, who is the other planet sitting in Purva Falguni. You see it is the sun. Who is sun? Sun is again the second lord. So again the lord of uh, second house, which is one of the four houses, is sitting in the nakshatra of the eleventh uh, lord. Okay. Then there is something very interesting here. Venus is also placed in eleventh. So any link between the second and the eleventh, there is always massive wealth. Tenth and eleventh, massive wealth. Okay. So here you see what's going on. Venus is placed in Madha Nakshatra. Okay. Now, but it is in the second house. 11th Lord in the second house, which is a great placement. Nakshatra is not that great. Why do I say this? <coughs> because you may feel that, uh, oh yeah, actually, it's in uh, Ketu's Nakshatra. Okay. Madha is ruled by Ketu. So it's not that great after all. It's not Purva Falguni, right? This is what you will think. There you go. That's the mistake. Here Ketu also is indicating Venus because 
K2 also gives results of the dispositors. Okay. So that means K2 is also indicating Venus because K2 is in the sign of Venus. So K2 is indirectly indicating three houses. The second house because Venus is placed there. The fourth house because he is placed there. Okay. And the 11th house because his dispositor Venus also rules the 11th. All right. And this Venus is in this nakshatra of K2, which is now indicating the second house along with the 11th house. This is huge, massive. All right. <laughs> and now you understood what is this Rahu in Magha. Oh, sorry, Rahu is in Ashwini. Ashwini is also ruled by K2. So now you see the 10th house is linked with the 11th house by Nakshatra. Very, very, very powerful placements. Now you see what, what, what else is going on. Who else is there here? Mercury is there. Where is Mercury? Mercury is in Uttara Falguni Faspada. Uttara Falguni is ruled by the sun. Remember. So sun is also the lord of the second house. He is sitting in the second house. All right. So. <clears throat> Here, except Jupiter and Mars, okay, because Jupiter is the sixth lord and Mars is the tenth lord, except the lord, except these two planets, the nakshatras ruled by Jupiter and Mars, most of the planets are sitting. Uh, you see, these four planets are very powerfully linked with the second and the eleventh, okay. Now, you see what's going on with Mars. Where is Mars placed? Mars is in Vishakha Nakshatra, point to be noted. Vishakha is ruled by Jupiter, which is the lord of the sixth house. All right, do not forget that. So there you go. Again, the tenth house is linked by Nakshatra with the sixth house. Okay. Then which other planet is remaining? We have Ketu, Ketu Maharaj. Where is Ketu Maharaj? He is in Swati. Swati, who is the lord of Swati? Rahu placed in the 10th house. Again, the 10th house is coming. Okay. Then Shani Maharaj is remaining. Saturn is in Pisces in the 9th house of Bhagya, Bhagya Sthan. He is in Revati Nakshatra. Who is the lord of Revati? It is Mercury. Where is Mercury placed? He is placed in the 2nd house. Again, all the money houses are linked. All right. One planet remains, and who is that? Jupiter, Guru Maharaj. He is in Ashlesha. He is also in Mercury's nakshatra. Ashlesha is ruled by Mercury. Again, the sixth lord is in the nakshatra of the, uh, is in uh, Mercury's nakshatra, which is in the second house. Again, the sixth house and the second house are linked. All right. So there you see in this planet, in this horoscope, all the planets they are linked to the money houses so that is why this person is so wealthy all right because you may you may see oh i have so many things why our wealth is not coming no it doesn't come like that if these conditions are there only then it comes i can show you thousand charts where these principles apply all right so the crux of this video is if you have any planet which is uh, in the nakshatra of the 11th lord. Okay, so check your 11th lord. So for example, here 11th lord is Venus. So Venus rules Bharani, Purva Shada and Purva Falguni. Okay, so if you have planets in these three nakshatras during their dashas, they will give massive wealth. Okay, and now you see here in the dashas what happened. Uh, this Venus Mahadasha was there. Okay. Not, uh, not very long. I would say only five years because he was... Uh, quite late, you know, Purva Falguni 4th Pada. So, less than 5 years, in fact. <coughs> then, Venus itself was the 11th Lord. So, but again, what to do? Unfortunately, only 5 years, less than that. Then, Sun came, okay. Sun is fantastic. Then, Moon again. Wow! Extraordinary, okay. So, <coughs> these Dashas were excellent, actually. And then, Mars. Mars is the 10th Lord, okay. Mars, anything, Mar, whenever Mars has anything to do with the 10th house, it behaves as if it is in Digbala. Okay, even if it is not sitting, even if it is ruling, it behaves as if it is in Digbala because Mars gets Digbali in the 10th house. Okay, so there you go, the 10th Lord's Dasha. Okay, fantastic. Then this Rahu Mahadasha, this person had earned uh, the 
millions and millions during this Rahu Mahadasha actually. And why did he earn? Because Rahu is in the 10th house. Okay. And he is in the Nakshatra Ashwini, which is ruled by Ketu, which signifies the 11th house because he is sitting in the sign ruled by Venus, okay, which is also in the second house. So all the money houses, the second, 10th and 11th are signified by Rahu. Fantastic horoscope for finances. This is a mind-blowing horoscope. I have seen very less horoscopes like this, okay. <clears throat> so next time uh, you get any clients who come to you for uh, money reading or career reading, you just check very simply when these planets are getting activated, okay? And then you grade like this. 11th house is the topmost, 10th house is lower than that, 6th house is even less, and 2nd house is even less, okay? 2nd house is the least powerful, and 11th house is the most powerful, all right? And then you have to see the nature of the planets, then you have to check the Navamsha, then you have to check the Astag Varga here and you can also check numerology all right so he's born on fifth you can see and five is the number of mercury okay and he has uh, planets like Shani in uh, Revati okay and he has Guru in Aslesha which is again ruled by mercury and mercury is the uh, sign of finances okay so and mercury himself is placed in the second house okay so you can use these numerology concepts also okay <clears throat> and he is born in September. September is 9. Okay, so that is the number of Mars. And Mars is the 10th Lord, again signifying the 6th house by being in Vishaka Nakshatra. Okay, it is in 5th house, Bhagyasthan. I mean, it's not a Bhagyasthan, but it is also known as, you know, Purva Punya, Purva Janma Punya. So it is very good. It is one of the best houses. Okay, and then now he will run, run this Jupiter Mahadasha. Okay, he is running Jupiter Mahadasha and he is having a fantastic time really. Okay, and he has become very spiritual also because this Guru is in exaltation and he is doing a lot of uh, meditation because Guru is in the Nakshatra of the 12th Lord. Okay, Mercury is the 12th Lord and Mercury rules Aslesha. Okay, there you go. That is it from my side and... Uh, if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know how to find the wealth giving nakshatras in the horoscope. All right. And if you want a consultation from me, then you can always go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And yes, if you are new, then please subscribe. All right. Thank you very much.